35-year-old Kelly Rothwell, she's disappeared. And her 46-year-old boyfriend, David Perry, sheriff's investigators say he's refusing to cooperate, has left the state of Florida, won't allow detectives to search his car. We felt that he was overbearing, maybe at times, and a bit possessive and controlling. She was, in fact, going to break up with him. So I went up to the condo, and I, I definitely feel like there was activity that happened in the back room. If something didn't go his way, he became very volatile, very uh, confrontational. You are seeing surveillance video. The, the video is uh, the last known footage of her. You could tell that it was something that was substantial weight when it hit the floor. Her live-in, as opposed to staying to look for her, moves out of the condo they shared and goes home to New York. It's a 22-hour drive. He hasn't been named a suspect. They didn't find any evidence of a fight or any blood. Or we are taking your calls out to Alexis Weed on the story. Alexis, a mysterious box, a box taken out of her condo. This is after she goes missing. The boyfriend, a cop, a corrections officer, has hightailed it to New York, from Florida to New York. This is within 72 hours after she goes missing. He's not sticking around to wait for her to walk through the front door. And apparently he sends his grown son to go what? retrieve items from the home. What's in the box? Right, Nancy, he's, in, he's still in New York, but uh, his son, his 21-year-old son, was there at the condo when police were there taking a look, checking things out. The police see him leaving with a box. Police will not tell us what was in that box, but they did confiscate it from this young man. And to David Lohr, crime reporter, AOLnews.com, the friends even called in a psychic. What did he learn? Well, uh, that, that, that's a matter of opinion, whether what the psychic has uh, learned, if, if you believe in what psychics have to say. Uh, but, uh, you know, he seems to think there was a scuffle in the house and, you know, whatever happened. But, uh, you know, the, the more interesting part, I think, right now is the, the search warrants uh, that have came out and the fact that uh, they've processed evidence inside the home tonight. Well, I would assume that they process evidence inside the home, but there's a problem with evidence inside the home. To Dr. Vincent DeMaio, Chief Medical Examiner, Bear County Forensic Pathologist, joining us out of San Antonio. Doctor, for instance, if they find her hair, her fingerprints, her blood in the condo, that could be explained through completely innocent reasons, depending on the nature of how it is found. Explain. It's she lives there. <laughs> she could bleed, she could lose hair, so this would be not unusual to find. In addition, even uh, he's living there, so if you find his DNA all over, it doesn't mean anything. The only thing that would be important is if you found a large quantity of blood or a large piece of hair that had been ripped from the head. Then you might have some evidence that you could Dr. use. Dr. DeMaio, I, I also believe that the location of where you discover the blood, for instance, if it is blood. It doesn't always have to be a lot of blood, but say if you find blood spatter thinly sprayed, maybe even invisible to the naked eye, on the ceiling, you know that that comes from a throwback. Uh, or, yeah, right. go, go ahead, doctor. Someone swinging a blunt instrument and hitting a person repeatedly, and then the blood gets on it, and then when you whip it back, it goes onto the ceiling. And if there's a carpet, you want to rip up the carpet because someone may clean the blood off the carpet itself, but blood will seep through into the underlying padding. So you want to examine the padding, not just the carpet. Unleash the lawyers. Joining us from our nation's capital, Eleanor Odom from Vegas, Richard Herman from Atlanta, Peter Odom, Eleanor, to get blood out of carpet. And, and I asked the downstairs neighbor very carefully last night, was her bedroom was her condo carpeted and he said yes to get blood or bodily fluids out of carpet is really hard yeah it is nancy and it's really easy to find if you're the forensics technician because you can also cut out the sections of the carpet and examine those for microscopic uh, spots of blood so there could be some good evidence in that apartment so to peter odom and richard herman let me guess your defense is we haven't found a body, so what, she's taken off with another man, Peter Odom. You going to try that again tonight? No defense needed, Nancy. They haven't made an arrest. Under our system of justice, the state has the burden of proving 
anyone's guilt for any crime and nothing has been proven. They don't even call him a person of interest at this point. It may, might be suspicious, okay, but let's, question, at, let's, minute, let's at least... Wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 Peter? Let's who's at least he? have an investigation. Wait, who's he? Who's the he you're talking about? The boyfriend. Oh, because nobody has said anything about him being a person of interest except you. I'm just Listening, saying, Nancy, not can hearing. we at least have an investigation before we condemn right. this person? Until you start talking as if he's the target. What about that, I, Peter Odom? Why did you do I that? Think, Nobody I, I said it, but you. I think our system of justice you. presumes him innocent. Uh -huh. I think our system All right. of justice presumes you know, him innocent. You know, you should Nancy. enter you know the Olympics in swimming, the backstroke. Well, you in, Herman. <laughs> Well, they're going to do the luminol testing in that room. You know, if the noise was so loud the night before, why didn't the neighbors call the police? Why didn't they I call them then? I asked him that, and he had an explanation. He said, and he was very, very believable and credible to my knowledge, to, to my understanding. I heard him and questioned him. He said they heard a series of loud, dull thuds, and they went, uh-oh, something's wrong. But then they heard the routine vacuuming. And I'm glad you brought that up, Herman. H hold on, hold on. Bethany Marshall, the downstairs neighbor, told me that this guy vacuumed. He's alone up in her condo. He's living in her condo. And he would vacuum like five times a day all by himself up there. Doesn't it speak to how extremely obsessive he is? And think about it. She's a beautiful young woman. She's about to graduate, to complete a degree, to launch her life, to have her freedom. What is that going to do to a personality disordered, controlled, freaked, obsessive male? It's going to make him homicidal. And what we see in these situations is normally you have an extremely personality disordered man paired with a normal woman who wants her freedom. And when she's just about to get it, that is when the guy becomes destabilized and becomes homicidal. Detectives are calling David Perry a person of interest. Detectives say he's not talking. He has uh, elected not to discuss anything to do with this case, provide us any background. It's suspicious behavior. They're fearful something bad may have happened. 